is a knucklehead. Knuckleheads. You knucklehead. 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 A knucklehead makes bad a drone. Boy, I heard he's a knucklehead. Horror is a very unique genre. In the way that franchises such as Star Wars, Marvel, and DC have fandoms, horror as a genre sort of has its own fan base. No matter how different the content may be, there are people who are just inherently drawn to the weird, scary, gory, and twisted. These people very often stick together and communicate within the same groups and enjoy the same things. It's very intriguing to me. But even though they are fans of the genre together in the same way that you and I may be Star Wars fans together, there are still plenty of actual franchises within the horror genre. Halloween, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream, Friday the 13th, Saw, and the list goes on and on. But the unfortunate tragedy of many of these horror franchises is, is that so often they start out with one decent to possibly even great movie, and because they cultivate such a strong fan base, they make another film that wasn't necessarily planned, and they just don't know when to stop. Practically all of these horror franchises are absolute garbage built on top of a strong start, or mediocrity that is just so painful to sit through over and over again. Let's take a look at Scream for example. The first film is a masterpiece. It completely revolutionized horror and slasher films specifically by using satire to comment on common horror tropes, but in the subsequent films, the use of this style almost makes them become the very thing they were trying to point a finger at. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is another good example. The first film in this franchise is also a masterpiece, but the rest of the franchise, be it sequels or reboots, completely misunderstands what made the first film great. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was never about blood and guts and gory deaths. In fact, it was barely able to show that kind of stuff in the first film given where film limitations were at during the time. The original film was more akin to something like Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, it was how disturbing the film was that made it fantastic. It even has a somewhat similar premise. You can kind of throw them both in that wrong turn subgenre if you want to say such a thing exists. It was set in a time where everyone was friendly, and whenever you needed help, you could turn to your neighbor and they'd gladly help you. But showing you that the people next door could be lunatics who murder people and eat them was a very frightening thing. The dinner scene in particular shows just how deranged they are and really instills that fear. You could go through just about every single horror franchise that exists and explain how many of their sequels or reboots failed. Even Halloween, which is arguably the most beloved horror franchise and while only having a few actually good films, has a better hit to miss ratio than most horror franchises. Except for one. There is one horror franchise that has never missed. Every single project that has been made in this franchise has been met with high critical acclaim, revolutionized horror in some way, and was massively beloved by its fans. That's right, I'm talking about Sam Raimi's Evil Dead franchise. In 1981, 20-year-old indie filmmaker Sam Raimi released what would go on to be one of the most revolutionary and influential horror films that would ever be made. Can you believe that? A 20-year-old indie filmmaker did that. He is also a former Michigan State Spartan, which is my local university and the school I've rooted for and wanted to go to my whole life, so it is pretty cool to know that his roots are from where I'm from, considering he's my favorite director of all time, and I'd love to follow in his footsteps as the next great Spartan storyteller. But he actually never graduated. He dropped out so he could film his second movie, and what you could call his first big movie, The Evil Dead which would be a smashing hit and allowed him to continue to pursue this path that wound up leading to resounding success, as he, Bruce Campbell, Robert Tapper, and Scott Spiegel formed a tight bond as filmmaking partners that went on to collaborate on many projects over the years. The Evil Dead is one of the greatest success stories in filmmaking history. The fact that a bunch of friends from high school and college came together and made a movie on their own that grossed domestically eight times their production budget, a movie which floored the likes of Stephen King and inspired legendary filmmakers like Peter Jackson and Edgar Wright, despite the fact that they had to stop production many times while filming to get more funding, couldn't find distributors even once they finished it, 
smoked pot for some of their scenes, used live rounds of ammunition, gained an X rating, and even got obscenity charges in the UK, is absolutely astounding. This movie showed filmmakers that truly anyone can do it. You don't have to be a well-known name, have a bunch of degrees or some sort of in in the industry to make something that has an impact on people. Not only that, but it pushed horror to levels not previously reached. It was the next stepping stone in a line of horror films that completely shocked audiences and revolutionized the genre. It had the same impact that Psycho had where audience members left the theater during the shower scene, or the impact that gave people nightmares after Night of the Living Dead. This helped horror films become what they are today. Kind of the same way Sam Raimi also helped make comic book films become what they are today later in his career with his first Spider-Man film in 2002. But back to Stephen King, I want to explain just how much the greatest horror author of all time was floored by this movie. He happened to catch the Evil Dead at a screening during a festival while it was still struggling to really find an audience, and he was gleefully cheering in the theater. Raimi asked him for a quote since he was very excited King enjoyed it, and King went even beyond that, writing a whole review where he says, The Evil Dead has the simple, stupid power of a good campfire story, but its simplicity is not a side effect. It is something carefully crafted by Raimi, who is anything but stupid, who is so full of talent that anybody unable to get it together might be tempted to wonder if gobbling the man's fingernails could possibly do any good. And on the Evil Dead's main poster, they used another quote of King's to help promote it where he calls it the most ferociously original horror film of the year. King loved it so much that when he heard Raimi was having a hard time finding the funds for a sequel, he told a producer he was working with to fund it. But what's crazy about all of this is that this was just the beginning for Evil Dead. The first film did that well critically and financially, while revolutionizing horror and getting the attention of many important creators, but unlike 90% of horror franchises, it continued to stack on hit after hit after hit. In fact, believe it or not, out of Raimi's four pieces of Evil Dead content that center around the Ash Williams character, so excluding the 2013 reboot which he didn't write or direct, the Evil Dead is probably my least favorite Evil Dead project. So many horror franchises have just pumped out crappy sequel after crappy sequel or continue attempting to reboot things to no avail. The typical best case scenario being something like Halloween, where it has its ups and downs, but Evil Dead only got better as the franchise continued. Six years after the first movie, Sam Raimi made Evil Dead 2, or Evil Dead 2 Dead by Dawn as it's called in promotional material, which I believe is an absolute masterpiece and is the best piece of content within the franchise. It has a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes with an 89% audience score, it has a 4.0 out of 5 star average by users on Letterboxd, and a 7.7 .7 out of 10 on IMDb, which is really good for a horror movie, as that's the same score Halloween has, and even better than the likes of Scream. But even though it's labeled as a sequel, it's more of a reboot. And even then, it's so different to the point where it's not exactly a reboot either, which why would you be rebooting a film that was made only six years ago and was massively successful? While the events of both movies canonically occur within the franchise as you'll find out if you watch the TV series that I talk about later, realistically speaking, they can't happen together. They use the same plot which would make no sense to have Ash go back to the same cabin and read from the same book unleashing the evil once again, and Bruce Campbell has said before that his interpretation of the ending of the first movie is that Ash dies. But because of what Sam Raimi did with this second film, all of those inconsistencies would be accepted by the vast majority of the audience, and there's really no other franchise where you'd see that. Because, you see, while the first movie was a horror classic, Sam Raimi made Evil Dead 2 a horror comedy. He took the plot of the first movie and while he kept it in the horror genre, decided to blend it with so many other things and changed how things transpired within the cabin completely. The genre was no longer just horror, but also comedy, and Sam did that better than probably anyone we've ever seen to date, as Sam has this very brilliant understanding of both and that they're actually rather similar, both having setups and payoffs, 
And this film was also very much inspired by Three Stooges comedy, as Sam is a huge fan of the Three Stooges. This was also somewhat of an action film and somewhat of a psychological thriller. Sam really leaned into the splatter aspect of things, while also really introducing lore with the Book of the Dead and its origins and capabilities, which was a fantastic touch, and of course this is an indie film, it's camp, and a cult classic, and those are also very appealing to many. There's even a touch of romance in there, which is actually one of my few criticisms because I felt there wasn't quite enough. As much as I loved this movie, there was less romance than in the first, and if Sam had touched on that just a tiny bit more, you could really throw it in that genre as well, and it's already one of the most ambitious and diverse films in that regard, trying to be a little bit of everything. And outside of all of this, Sam also completely changed Ash, the lead protagonist, from being a somewhat shy and nerdy college kid thrown into a terrible situation, to a cocky and kinda dumb but very brave and bold camp hero. In Evil Dead 2, he becomes a parody of every Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, and Kurt Russell character that has ever existed. Between his chainsaw hand, legendary one-liners, and the best jaw cinema has ever seen, he is the prototypical 80s action hero, and Sam takes that way over the top to the point where it's so badass and so hilarious at the same time. So while Evil Dead 2 has some elements of the first movie, it's also so different. And this movie has been the template going forward, and is why the audience is able to accept such absurd things that happen going forward, because it's all part of the charm. The way that evil is brought back into the world in Ash vs. Evil Dead, the TV series, is because Ash gets high and wants to impress a girl, so he reads from the book, thus unleashing the dead. And any other franchise people would think that's unbelievably stupid, and it would take all the enjoyment away because they just can't buy that. But because it's Evil Dead, they know that is the norm for this franchise and for Ash. The stupidity is hilarious and a huge reason people love this franchise. So on top of all of the revolutionary things Sam Raimi did with the first Evil Dead, primarily for horror and indie filmmaking, Sam reinvented Evil Dead with the second film and did things just as bold and impressive by making Evil Dead 2 one of the most genre diverse films you will ever watch and balanced it unbelievably well. That then brings us to Army of Darkness, which leans a little bit more into comedy. The first Evil Dead was pretty much straight up horror. Evil Dead 2 is what I like to call the sweet spot between horror and comedy, and where the franchise is at its truest. And then Army of Darkness sort of swung the pendulum a little bit more towards comedy, which even though it's not quite as beloved as the first two by critics and fans, it's still very, very good, and its ratings still reflect that. After Evil Dead 2, this film seemingly sort of embraced the campy parody of 80s action heroes that Ash Williams is, and put more of a focus on him and building his legend status. He only becomes such really at the end of Evil Dead 2, so Army of Darkness was elaborating upon that, and really giving fans what they wanted, while also allowing Raimi to tell the story he wanted to tell, as Ash was transported back in time and had to fight evil with English knights. The originality of this franchise is simply endless. Seeing Ash, who is dumb by our standards, treat people from this time like they're idiots is a pretty funny sight to behold, as he makes them fear him with his futuristic technology that he had nothing to do with creating. Ash being a chosen one, which is one of my favorite character tropes in fiction, is really emphasized in this film in particular as all of these people really look to him as their savior, and believe he's the one the Necronomicon speaks of to defeat evil. We get to see Bruce Campbell really have some fun in this movie with prosthetics and elaborate fight scenes, and like all classic action films, we finally get to see the hero get the girl, even though Ash has to go back to his own time once it's all said and done. This film may not have been as revolutionary as the first two, but it took the franchise to a new place outside of the cabin and was crucial in making Ash Williams one of the greatest heroes in cinematic history, and most certainly in horror history. But because Army of Darkness was a box office failure, despite the fact that Sam and company had proven they could make ferociously original things of amazing quality over and over, there came a long stretch where Evil Dead content was absent from our screens. But while Raimi was busy with projects such as For the Love of the Game and his Spider-Man trilogy during this time, Evil Dead didn't stop. 
Evil Dead continued as sets of comics and video games. Sam oversaw, approved, and somewhat contributed to some of this stuff in similar ways that George Lucas did with the Star Wars EU. The comics were something that never let down, as the character of Ash and the concept of the Evil Dead are just so wildly entertaining and aren't restricted by certain things lore-wise. They did many crossover comics with other projects Raimi had worked on, such as an Ash and Xena comic, an Ash and Darkman comic, but they even expanded beyond that and did an Ash Saves Obama comic and a Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash comic. They wanted to have fun with these comics and let creativity flow, and they absolutely did. As far as video games, there was one that came out in 1984, before Evil Dead 2 even released, but an actual focus on games happened around 2000, once all of the Raimi films had come out, and they really had a good idea of how to shape a game in this franchise's image. Evil Dead Hail to the King, Evil Dead A Fistful of Boomstick, and Evil Dead Regeneration came out in 2000, 2003, and 2005, all of which featured Bruce Campbell doing voice work for Ash and were pretty fun games. They haven't released a new game since Regeneration, but they actually are releasing a new one next year in 2022 called Evil Dead The Game, which seems to have a heavy emphasis on co-op multiplayer, while also allowing you to experience this world in any way possible. You'll be able to play as really any character who has been on screen in the franchise before, it appears multiple iconic locations will be in the game, and you can even play as the dead, as opposed to the heroes if you so choose. Being such a fan of this franchise, I absolutely cannot wait. It's been a long time since we've had an Evil Dead game, and this seems like exactly what I'd want from one. But back to content that actually has come out, after comics and games carried the franchise for a little while, in 2013, a new Evil Dead film was released. Sam Raimi didn't write or direct it, but he did produce it and Ash didn't appear until the very end, which was a cameo seemingly setting something else up. The film returned to the cabin and used the same plot as the first two films and went back to the strictly horror style of the first film and with modern filmmaking capabilities was much scarier. But for me personally, while I did enjoy the film and thought it was quite good on its own, I don't love this franchise just because it's horror or because I find the cabin plot on its own very fascinating. I love it because of Sam Raimi's brilliant directing, because of the horror and comedy blend most specifically, and because of the Ash Williams character. And I think after the movie came out, while it was received pretty well critically giving the franchise yet another hit, they realized this. That it leaned a bit too much into horror and that wasn't necessarily what the fans wanted to see. Which is why two years later, we got Ash vs. Evil Dead, the original series on stars. Ash vs. Evil Dead is my second favorite project in the entire franchise. In my opinion, it goes back to the franchise in its purest form, the perfect blend between horror and comedy, like Evil Dead 2 was. It was incredibly faithful to the heart of Evil Dead, and was a brilliant sequel series to an iconic, older franchise, almost acting as a precursor to something like Cobra Kai. And making a series, especially many years after the original films, was one of the most genius ideas they could have conceived. It allowed them to do so many things they wouldn't have been able to do previously. As great of a film hero as Ash Williams is, this series made him so much more of an actual character than he ever was. Ash was always iconic, he was a badass, hilarious, had a great look, great lines, great scenes, etc. But the first two films were much more about the style of the films, rather than the characters that were in them and their specific arcs. Army of Darkness went into Ash's character a little bit, but really only the hero side of him. Ash vs. Evil Dead explored Ash living with the repercussions of what happened, his hometown thinks he's a serial killer and nicknamed him Ashy Slashy, police are constantly looking for him, he never grew up and got an actual life and instead just lives in a trailer and works at a basic store called Value Stop where people younger than him boss him around, he was traumatized by what happened in a way that made him emotionally regress. His dad hated him because he thought Ash murdered his daughter, Ash's sister Cheryl. This show also gave us multiple prominent characters that didn't die, or at least not immediately, or came back to life. I know, that sounds crazy, this franchise is just that wild. 
Basically, every character around Ash in the first three films died immediately, and even the few that didn't in Army of Darkness weren't very deep as characters and of course were left in the past. But in this show we got Pablo and Kelly, Ash's two companions throughout. Pablo is very campy but in a different way from Ash, and also has many mystical ties. Kelly is very strong-willed and not afraid to get covered in blood. Then of course we find out Ash has a daughter he didn't know about, Brandy. Those three make the perfect team to carry the franchise forward, but more on that later. We also have a consistent antagonist in the series, Ruby, rather than it just being different deadites like it was in each film, and we also get many different incarnations of the dead, be it demons, ancient dark ones, possessed characters, or even alternate versions of characters. But this series didn't just go in depth with characters, it also massively expanded upon the lore. We find out about who wrote the Necronomicon, we meet the demon Kandar, who is mentioned a lot in Sumerian writing and speaking, which, speaking of Sumerian, we meet the Knights of Sumeria, who are a group who has been battling evil for generations. There's so much we get substance-wise in this series to back up the incredible style of the Evil Dead. And speaking of style, the series format allows them to branch out and experiment with so many different styles, which ultimately is at the heart of this franchise. The series kept a similar directing style to tell a coherent story, but they took on so many different horror locations, genres, and tropes to take Evil Dead above and beyond what they had done previously. Unfortunately, the series was cancelled after three seasons, and it ended on somewhat of a cliffhanger, even though it had all of the making for a perfect conclusion if they wanted to take that route, but it seems they wanted to continue the story, and unfortunately didn't get the chance. And that then brings us to Evil Dead Rise. It's only been a few years since Ash vs. Evil Dead ended, but a new Evil Dead film is already in the works. Bruce Campbell said he would have returned if Sam Raimi wanted to direct that film, but he didn't, so Bruce instead announced his live-action retirement from the role, though I wouldn't take that too terribly seriously, as Sam Raimi's upcoming Doctor Strange film could really put Sam back on the map, and perhaps he might want to revisit Evil Dead after that. But Sam instead got horror director Lee Cronin to make this film, and from what I've seen from him, his work is pretty good, so I have no doubt it'll be yet another Evil Dead hit, though I do have some reservations about it. The first being that it will be more like the Evil Dead reboot in 2013, which again was good, just very horror-specific genre-wise. The second being that Ariel Carver O'Neill, Ray Santiago, and Dana De Lorenzo, or Brandy, Pablo, and Kelly, aren't in the film, or at least that we know of. As I mentioned, they would make the perfect team to take this franchise forward, especially if Bruce is done as Ash. Fans love these characters because of the TV series, and each carry important parts of Ash's character with them. It would be a really great surprise if they were in Evil Dead Rise, and I truly hope they are. But either way, I'm sure it'll be great, as every single Evil Dead project has been. From beginning to end, throughout the struggles they may have faced, this franchise has revolutionized horror and filmmaking, delivering hit after hit after hit, making it the best horror franchise of all time.